time for Claire to play, where we take you inside the tent to get you updated on the latest injuries in the Bay. Proud to partner with UCSF Health on this segment and bring an associate professor of orthopedic surgery. That is Dr. Narav Pandia. Come on, Doc. Let's go. How you doing today? How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm, I'm a little worried about Dan, though. You know, if Achilles is acting up, that could be that could be some time off. We don't want that to happen. No, and thankfully, I have a sedentary job other than when I forget my Golden State lumber read and I have to run to my locker and back. But, Doc, <laughs> I'm also dealing with a UCL injury of my own from holding this baby. Uh, if it's a grade one, what am I looking at in terms of being cleared to swaddle? You know, I think, you know, it definitely depends on your swaddling technique. If yeah. you're more of a stationary swaddler in the pocket or more of a running type swaddler. But, That's uh, a great call. In general, you know, seven to ten days out. Seven to ten days out. You'll uh, be- okay, what if, uh, what if a much more highly paid person <laughs> had a UCL injury? Then, then, then what would you say about the quarterback of the Buffalo Bills? <laughs> yeah, so I think in general, when, you know, everyone here is Josh Allen, UCL, they automatically jump to, oh, this is a pitcher, you need surgery. First of all, this injury in quarterbacks is extremely rare. I mean, there are only a handful who have actually had them. And actually, we know very closely here in the Bay, Nick Mullins actually had a UCL injury and is one of the few quarterbacks that actually underwent surgery. But in general, because the throwing motion is different, the velocity is different, the velo- then the volume is different, the vast majority of these injuries are treated without surgery in quarterbacks, and most of them can get back to play pretty quickly. Um, the key thing is making sure pain's under control, they have good strength they, and their accuracy is there. So it's more about managing pain than it is anything else. But I would not be concerned about this being a season-ending injury for Josh Allen. It's something that they should be able to manage pretty well um, as, as the year goes on. Yeah, short of surgery, which you figure if it was a grade three, they already would have cut to that chase. So good news for Bills fans. Niners have a bunch of MCL guys. Um, you know, the, the ligament that Mitchell and Al Shire and McKivitz have hurt. What does their return to play look like? Yeah, so they're kind of all in that six to eight week time frame for what you would expect for kind of your, your garden variety grade two MCL. Um, so they're right at that time point when you expect them to get back. I think the key thing that's going to really differentiate how their performance is is really based on position. You know, I think Al Shair, a linebacker, should probably have the minimal least impact in terms of his game. You have time to react to that position. There's not as much kind of cutting and pivoting that happens at the spur of the moment. So I expect that his impact would probably be the less. Um, I think McKibbitt's at the line, you know, just because more people are falling on that leg, um, could be a little bit more hindered, particularly if he's getting contact. I think for Mitchell, that's probably going to be the toughest return to play. Now, we do know that players coming off an MCL, they won't have any long-term issues. But I think in the contents of a running back, where you're having to do constant cutting, constant kind of change of direction, um, it could potentially be a little bit less in terms of how much we see him out there in his performance. But once again, just like with Debo, having McCaffrey there will allow him to have less of a load and hopefully then allow him to have those good spurts where he can be out there for a couple player, uh, a couple carries and, and be a good change of pace back to the team. Yeah, and, and also remembering that Eli was the first one of the group to get hurt. That was all the way back in the first half of week one uh, against the uh, Chicago Bears. Uh, Doc, last time we saw Kyle Juszczyk, one of his ten fingers was absolutely not like the others. Uh, it, it was uh, it was heading the wrong direction. Uh, what 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 are his chances to uh, to play this week, and what's he looking at? Yeah, so I think you know he's right within that two to three week timeline for these kind of garden variety finger fractures. So, and I think he, there were reports he was actually out of practice, um, you know, this week. So I think um, I think all signs point to him being effective uh, in playing, particularly since the position he plays. I mean, he's not catching a lot of passes, he's not holding the ball a lot. So with a finger fracture, assuming that it's stable and he's doing well, he should be able to block and do all the things that make him effective uh, at that position. So I expect him to be out there. Eric Armstead, foot issues. It was uh, plantar fasciitis. Then it became an ankle. What's he looking at in terms of his ability to come back from a myriad of foot issues? Yeah, you know, I think the, the plantar fasciitis obviously is the thing you worry about from like a, a long-term perspective because it can be you know hard to predict. There's not a timeline for when this will get better. And now, obviously, potentially having this quote-unquote hairline ankle fracture may have forced him to, to kind of rest that area as well, too. For these hairline injuries, Typically, it's about four to six weeks uh, in terms of when you get back. So that puts them on pace to play in the next week or two. Um, obviously, a lot of that is based on where in the ankle it is, you know, how big the player is and, and what it looks like on x-ray. But, you know, it's kind of a chicken versus the egg. You know, did this, did this ankle fracture develop because he was compensating for the plantar fasciitis or did the plantar fasciitis develop because there was an ankle fracture there as well, too. So hopefully both these issues get addressed for him and he can be a good, good contributor for us in this, uh, this next stretch run. Doc, I got a Debo question, and, and it's this. Um, it, it sounds like he's going to be back. We never really knew the extent of the hamstring injury, 
But when Charverius Ward and Trent Williams, and I know these were different injuries, but when they came yeah. back, it was very clear that, that they were not fully themselves, and, and it somewhat compromised their play. I, is there any of that in the back of your mind with Debo this week? Yeah, you do worry a little bit about that because, you know, in, in general for hamstrings, even if they're minor ones, I mean, you're not going to fully, fully heal them until four to six weeks, particularly at the speed position. So where you potentially see that impact is, you know, when Debo's trying to explode or, or doing those kind of change of pace type things, does he look a little slow or he's a little bit hesitant? Um, that's where you may see it. Um, but, you know, it sounded like more than anything else you're being cautious, and he's dealt with this before, so I don't think necessarily there's going to be a mental component. But you may particularly see him not, you know, be as, me- be as effective in terms of yards after the catch because he can't separate from the defense as much. So you may see a little bit of that impact the next week or two. But given the fact that he's dealt with this so much, he probably knows how to get his body ready for, for playing. Um, and then uh, last thing, Doc, uh, the right shoulder's been killing me. Uh, back spasms oh, last boy. week, but hopeful okay. of golf on Friday. Uh, am I cleared to play? You, you are cleared to play. A little Advil, a little ice. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, you're, you're good to go. I think your, your overall performance and prognosis may be a little bit bigger than Dan. Okay, bigger. all right. That hurts. Fantastic. And, and if the shoulder keeps hurting like hell... Uh, I, I, I like I know your phone number, but I don't know your address, and, and, and so I might need it. <laughs> Anytime, you know, I'm here to help everyone out at the station as they as they get cleared to play. Okay, well, perfect. you can add hurt feelings to my list of injuries now, Doc, because uh, you say I'm broken. So there you go. <laughs> well, sometimes the truth hurts, Dan. Yeah, it does. Age is a factor, <laughs> uh, Doc. Thank you so much. <laughs> no problem. Take care, guys. All